stuff like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, talk to people that win and yeah. they'll tell you that story that I knew it was going to happen. Right. I made it happen. I had a vision board. Talk to people that tried and failed and yeah. are homeless. Yeah. And they have a different version Absolutely. of this manifesting reality and I've story. I've fallen on my face in so many ways in my life that, like, I, I recognize how lucky this is. And I would not, you know, grab some kid and go, like, quit your job, be a writer. Man, it's going to, you know, it, just because it worked for me in that one instance doesn't mean it would have, you know, worked in any instance. Yeah, I think the best inspiration you could give to someone is just your own success. Yeah. To, to, if, for you to tell people to do what you did. It's almost irresponsible. Right, right, right. Yeah, and and I feel like everything I've learned, I've learned by doing it wrong a few times. Mm -hmm. You know, and so like when I, uh, yeah. I'm not, I'm not like Yoda. I'm not this guy on a mountain, like you know, right. telling them is like, yeah, no, I've I've done a lot wrong, and what I might tell you could be totally wrong. But learning how to do stuff, that's a part of the process. You yeah. do stuff wrong. Yeah, I mean, this, yeah, absolutely. You can't just, be scared to do things wrong. Right, you just self correct. Uh, yeah, and keep self correcting, and mm -hmm. hopefully you, something good happens before you die. Yeah, it's a tricky process, and it doesn't always work out. But the problem is, you're only hearing from the people where it does work out sure yeah you know when, yeah, yeah. And, and some people look there, there's a hard reality about talent too like mm. some people just don't have talent and some people just aren't good writers yeah there, there's a, a lot of people that go like you know if it's your dream never quit blah 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 it's like mm. well, i'd love to be a formula one driver i would not ever be a formula one driver you know it's like i, I think you sort of have to like play into your strengths and obviously work hard and get better but it's it's not a it's not just you know follow your your you know your wishes it's a balance like everything in life is a balance yeah and, it's not fair and it's it's very tricky yeah and the idea that all you have to do is just like want it bad enough you yeah. know yeah and i used to um sort of give advice to people based on my own problems um you know like earlier in my career so like a young person would be like what do i need to do and and i was like I wish I believed in, in myself more because I was very half-assed about everything because it's like I never thought anything would come from it, but I wanted to write a book, so I'd pick here, pick at it here and there. So I used to tell people, you know, believe in yourself, believe in yourself. And then you start learning a little more about these people, and it's like, yeah, self-confidence is not this person's problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's lack of it's, talent. It's, it's writing or it's editing yeah. or it's something like that. And it's like they're very, very confident. So – you know, there's not one one size fits all for like helping people. Well, there's also confidence versus confidence that's based on an understanding of your competence. Yeah, and and your work ethic and conf confidence that's built up over time yeah. with effort versus delusional confidence. Absolutely, and my work ethic came slowly, uh, but by necessity, and um, and it's good now. And, you know, I am pro a prolific it writer. It has to be, yeah. as much as you're writing right, this long-ass right. books. Yeah, although I don't do much else, <laughs> although, <laughs> although I have a family now. So, uh, um, but, yeah, it's uh, there's, there's so much that I've learned along the way that's made me a little bit more disciplined because it's like, okay, if I don't average – 1200 words a day or something i'm going to be really far behind by july and the books do august 1st so you know it's like i got to go bust it out yeah the first time you you gave someone one of your books to read like uh, were they were they all like the gray man like the early book yeah always the same genre different variations really? of the same genre yeah yeah so did is this something that you've been interested in in terms of like the way you read like yeah a hundred percent i mean i was just a reader like I, I don't have military experience i'm not jack carr or brad taylor or any of these other guys um you know i i, I bartended till i was like 31 and i, I had other jobs you know like i always had a couple jobs um, I got my degree in international relations and political science, but didn't do anything with it till, <laughs> for 20 something years, you know, other than 10 bar with it, I guess. Wow. Um, so I, I read, but I read every espionage novel, military stuff, um, uh, fiction. I actually tried to get in the Air Force at one point and didn't get in. And um, I was sort of fascinated by that world. And I'd read The Economist when I was 17 years old. I had a subscription to The Economist. And U.S. News and World Report, and would really? would read all this. I was just interested in that foreign policy and 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 that sort of thing. Um, so I I loved it, and I and I loved thinking up you know kind of like wild, crazy stories and big action set pieces and um, geopolitical this and that. So I, Clancy, the first book I ever bought in my life was or thriller I've ever bought was. 
Patriot Games, which was a Tom Clancy novel. Oh. I was like 19 years old. And, uh, and then, well, how wild is it for you to now to be writing that? A quarter century later, he and I were, you know, I'm, I'm in his house, you know, sitting there in his office talking to him. You know? Isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah. It probably could have happened faster if I, if I worked a little <laughs> bit, <laughs> if I worked harder. But maybe it wouldn't because no. I think some of the, what comes out in your writing is actual life experience. A hundred percent. You need some of that. A hundred percent. That's what I keep telling myself. <laughs> so I don't get depressed about not getting published at 25. Right? Well, how can you get depressed? You're very no. successful yeah. now. Yeah, you no. can't, you, you know, it's funny how people are, right? Yeah, there. yeah, exactly. I yeah. was looking at like the things that are wrong with what you've done. What could have, what could have been, but yeah. no, no, it's worked out really well. It's really interesting to me because you seem to be like a, a very like mild mannered sort of a guy and you write for, for such a psychopath. Yeah. You, you yeah, know, yeah. It's like, do you know about Robert E. Howard? Mm-mm. Robert E. Howard is the guy who wrote the Conan books. Oh, yeah. And he was um, like, y- you know, kind of like a real quiet guy who lived with his mom and committed suicide oh, in wow. his early 30s. Uh-huh. But he wrote the most savage fantasy novels yeah. about Conan the Barbarian. Yeah. And he did, you know, all of them while he was this sort of quiet, soft spoken guy. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, there's there's not necessarily a correlation, you know, between one or the other. I I know, you know, guys that were Delta Force, and they're as mild mannered uh, as possible. I mean, they weren't then, I'm sure, right. <laughs> when they were downrange. But um, you, you just never know. And then, it, as far as writers go, you know, there's there's guys that write pretty, um, you know, accurate, you know, military or stuff like that. I. What's different about my character to some degree, I think, is like he's a very empathetic guy. I don't want to make him like this square jawed, yeah. you know, like total badass. He definitely has a screw loose. He he doesn't his moral compass, you know, doesn't point true north or whatever, but he wants to do the right thing at the end of the day and he's empathetic and uh he's vulnerable in some ways that, that some of the other characters aren't. And I think I think that's helped the series over the years. Mm. Yeah, no, I think so too. I mean, there's he's got a compass. Mm-hmm. And it's it's kind of a fucked up compass, yeah. but yeah, yeah, yeah. In one of the books, uh, I think it was uh, Gunmetal Gray. It was the sixth book. I, I remember near the end, I was like, I'm going to have him do something that makes sense to him, but it's actually the readers. It's not what the readers are going to want him to do, and and I, that, that had never come up before. And I was like, okay, this like. If, if I'm reading this book, I'm going like, don't, don't be an idiot. Don't, you know, don't do it that way. Don't do, you know, it's basically the outcome of the story, what, mm-hmm. what he was going to do with this, this guy that he rescued. And I was like, but it makes sense to him. So am I okay with having a bunch of readers mad at me? And I'm like, you kind of have to go with your gut. And I was. And I, I said, all right, I'm going to have him do what, what makes sense in the story for the, this character, the way that I built him up over six books. 